First Noel. It's one of the most, surely one of the most, one of the most famous carols of all. It's one we, everyone sings it. We all, we all know it. But what's it really about? What is, what is a Noel? Why, why is there a first one? Is there, a, is there a second one? Uh, and how does it flow from, from end to end? What's the story that the first Noel tells? Well, actually, it's much like other carols. It's a wonderful mixture of great biblical truth, uh, with in this case some fairly interesting bits of uh, creativity, should we say, which go, go somewhat beyond the story, really bring in some things which didn't happen at all, together with some, a wonderful thing that we need to do. But first things first, as they say, and what's first in this is Noel. Well, what is a Noel? Well, look it up, and it says it's, it's, uh, from the, the, it's a French word from the Latin, and it means uh, he is born. Um, to be honest, I'm not quite sure how that works because the, the Latin word for for being born is something about nascent, I think, and uh, in French to be born is, is naissance, is a birth, or ne is, is born. So I'm not quite sure what uh, some French people were thinking. Well, the word the word we have for birth is something like nascent or naissance, and so why why do we call Christmas uh, when Jesus was born uh, Noel? So I'm really not quite sure how the how the word works, but it it certainly is is thought to mean he is born. That's that's the that's the news. That's the announcement, and the Carol rightly says that the first he is born announcement went to certain poor shepherds in fields, as they lay went to the the shepherds in in the fields above Jerusalem to say he is born. You must go and see him. But that, at that point, the carol starts to become a little bit, um, should we say, fanciful, because in the second verse says that the shepherds look it up and saw a star shining in the east beyond them far. Uh, and, and I have to admit that at this point, the really that that's that's something that's it certainly inspired. Uh, Probably a million, a million Christmas cards. It's a, a picture that's probably there in many nativity plays. But the star is nothing to do with the shepherds, is it? Uh, the shepherds had the angels came to the shepherds. The sh angels told the shepherds to go to Bethlehem. Uh, then, when Jesus was was eight days old, they they took uh, Joseph and Mary took him to uh, Jerusalem in the temple. And then it was a bit later that. Uh, the wise men arrived. They, they come, as the carol tells us, from, from country far. It took them a, a while to get there. And the star only appears uh, to uh, inspire the wise men uh, and ultimately to, to lead them to Bethlehem. And there's no way that Mary and Joseph would have gone to Jerusalem where Herod was once they'd heard from the wise men that Herod was, uh, was after his blood or heard, heard, from, from, uh, heard, heard that that he was angry about a new king. Um, and so the carol kind of push, pushes the shepherds and the, and the wise men together in a way that doesn't really reflect the, the story. But I think actually the, the whole carol is about the wise men. The shepherds really only there to, to get, bring an excuse to talk about the star because in the third verse uh, we, we read that by the light of that same star, three wise men came from country far. It's that the story. The story is about the carol is about the wise men who came from the east, following the star, or inspired by the star. I think it's probably a better way to understand understand it because the the Bible says that they uh, they says that they they say that they saw the star in the east. Maybe when they were in the east, or, or when it rose, it can be the same same word because uh, stars and, and planets and everything rise in the east and go across and set in, set in the west. And so they saw it there and they've come to worship him. They saw his star there 
they'd come to worship him. And I think probably the best understanding is they saw a pattern in the stars that told them that a king had been born in Israel. Something to do with the, the lion, I think, uh, Leo, the, the lion of Judah. And that's probably what they saw in the stars, something remarkable, which said a king has been born in Israel, and they came to find him. So that's how, how the, the, sto the, what the, the story that, that it tells. And of course, then it goes on to uh, the gifts that they gave. Then entered in those wise men three, fell reverently upon their knee. Those wise men, those people who represent people from all nations coming to worship Jesus. But to worship him, to fall on their knee before him. They had the wisdom. He was just a baby. But they knew that they, they were due to worship him. And then it carries on to offer there in his presence the gold and myrrh and frankincense. Uh, the, the order swept, swapped round to make the poem work, entered there in his presence, gold and myrrh and frankincense. The order swapped round, but the three gifts, the three gifts. And we'll think more about those uh, on Sunday when we get to, to Epiphany and what those, those gifts really signify. But where does the carol lead us? Where does it go? It ends, well, they brought their worship. Then let us all, with one accord, bring praises to our Heavenly Lord. And this is really where, this is why, despite its sort of slightly uh, flexible approach to the story, it is actually such a great story, great carol, because it leads us where we need to go. It leads us to worship. We were made to worship. We were made to worship Jesus. And this carol leads us there. Then let us all, with one accord, sing praises to our heavenly Lord, who hath made heaven and earth of naught, and with his blood mankind hath bought. So we worship Jesus not actually as a baby, but Jesus, the Lord of all, as our creator, the one who's made uh, heaven and earth of naught, our creator and our redeemer. And with his blood, mankind hath bought. So it's a, a great carol that leads us from that story, from its slightly strange version of the story, but focusing in on the wise men to call us to worship. And of course, it's as we worship, it's as we worship Jesus that our hearts are put back in the right place, in the right relationship, and we are transformed. So I'm very grateful to this carol for all that it plays a bit fast and, lo fast and loose with the story. And uh, we'll look at another one tomorrow. God bless. <laughs>